Week zero is upon us, man, and we've just released our MEAC SWAC preview yesterday in which we looked at the Alabama State versus Howard game kicking off in Atlanta. We have another big FCS matchup going on in Montgomery, the Crampton Bowl, FC FCS kickoff game, Jacksonville State versus Stephen F. Austin. And the storyline, I, I guess, that is going to be really big on each side. You got Jacksonville State, their final season at the FCS level. They're about to move up to the CU CUSA. They're not eligible for conference championships, not eligible for the FCS playoffs, even to be ranked in the FCS at uh, Perform Poll. So, what is this team going to look like year one under Rich Rodriguez? And are they going to be able to compete um, in their final at a high level in their final season at the FCS level? Now, Stephen F. Austin comes in with expectations sky high right now. I mean, top 10 preseason ranking. A lot of people think this is a team that can make a run into the later rounds of the FCS playoffs and finally get over the hump that has been Sam Houston and win the WAC this season. But let's let's kind of look at this matchup and what what these teams were last season. Now, Stephen F. Austin leads the all-time series 3-2. to two. Jacksonville State winning last year's matchup in an explosive, exciting game, 28-24 to 24 over there in Jacksonville. But last season was a down one for Jackson, Jacksonville State, 5-6, and 3-3 three and three in conference record. Now, it was highlighted by... A huge Hail Mary win over Florida State it, it down there in Tallahassee. I mean, that was one of the games of the year, man. That was still one of the most talked about FCS moments and really helped the FCS really tally a lot of FBS Power 5 wins. Now, Stephen F. Austin coming off a great year, 8-4, and 4-2 four, four and two in the WAC. Now, Colby Carthel, uh, year 4, 17-17, but I don't think he's had a year thus far with the hype and the expectations surrounding this program like he does this year. So can he complete his rebuild almost? He came in. We knew Stephen F. Austin was going to give him some lee leeway. And over the past three seasons, he has really built up the Stephen F. Austin program in, pre in an impressive fashion. And this is the year it's all supposed to pay off. Now, like I mentioned, there were some other storylines to watch. And the number one thing I'm looking for for Jacksonville State is the duality of the transfer portal. And what I mean by that is the transfer portal can give you some great players. They land five-star Clay Webb on the offensive line. They, they, you know, some of their star players, even the guy to, uh, below me, Markel Benton, came came from an SEC program. Jacksonville State has been very dependent landing uh, S former SEC, former Power 5 transfers. But... This year, the transfer portal really took away from the program. When you look at all the talent that they lost to Kario Harper, um, even even just on the defensive line, man, they they lost they lost multiple guys off the defensive line. They uh, this program is going to look very very different. Even Malik Feaster announcing a very late transfer, winding up at the team that Jacksonville State beat last year in Florida State. <laughs> Josh Josh Samuel coming going to Austin P. How does Jacksonville State in year one of Rich Rodriguez overcome that? And do they do it with some guys they already have in the program that they got out of the transfer portal? Or did the guys they landed um, out of high school, out of the transfer portal, really help them rebuild this team? There's a lot of question marks about this Jacksonville State team this year due to the losses. And it just shows that uh, even a program who has been fairly historically successful in the transfer portal – really got picked apart this year in big ways. And I'm really interested to see how this team looks in game one this year of week zero. Now, the other big storyline, who is going to be quarterback one? That is a million-dollar question right now for Jacksonville State because we know the offense of Rich Rodriguez, what he likes to have at the quarterback spot. Now, he had a press conference this week. And he was talking about the quarterback situation. Of course, Zion Webb is really the favorite here. He's an experienced guy who's been in the program, has really shown some potential over his career. But you also bring in Aaron McLaughlin, who was a highly touted guy out of high school. And you land three-star Tayshawn Smoot, a uh, true freshman coming in, who I think was one of the best quarterbacks out of high school to commit to the FCS level this offseason. 
all three of these guys have the opportunity to be QB1. And he said, and this is the quote straight from Rich Rodriguez's mouth, is we are going to run what we run, no matter who is in there, but we're going to wait till game time. He said that he does not plan to name a starter up until a minute or 30 seconds before kickoff. So it could be Webb, it could be McLaughlin, it could be Smoot. And it, what it really does is I, I'm really curious to see what the Stephen F. Austin defense comes out looking like because all these quarterbacks are a little bit different, especially Smoot, who we don't know a lot about coming from high school. But Webb brings a whole different skill set than McLaughlin does at the quarterback spot. So who is going to be QB1 for the Gamecocks? Or do we see a, any sort of rotation from that QB? quarterback room for Jacksonville State and Montgomery this weekend. Now for Stephen F. Austin, already touched on the first one. Is the hype going to be too much to handle? There's always teams who people are really high on coming into the season that just are not used to those expectations as everyone says is different being the hunted than the hunter. Can Stephen F. Austin live up to the top 10 hype that they've been receiving all off season long? There's a big question mark because coming out week zero, and we in our Stephen F. Austin preview a lot, we talked about they really do have three FBS games because Jacksonville State and Sam Houston do have those extra scholarships. So this is a great litmus test for Stephen F. Austin on where they're going to fit into the FCS, you know, rankings or, or just uh, tiers going into the season. This is a must-win game for them, and they got to kick off the season in a big way this weekend in, in Montgomery. Now, the other big storyline I wanted to touch on is the development of Trey Self. Now, this is a guy who has all the talent in the world, and as our guy Dustin Helton told us on the Stephen F. Austin preview, he's a guy who can make all the throws on the field and can be very dynamic, but then sometimes with that gunslinger mentality can make some questionable throws. And even though Malik Feaster, Nakario Harper, and some of those guys are gone, they still have some really talented cornerbacks. Marco Baker come into mind and some other guys on Jacksonville State secondary that can make plays. So Trey Self is going to have to take care of the football, and he has a talented enough wide receiving core around him and a great running back room next to him that he can really rely on his weapons. Just get them the ball let them make plays in open space. And I really am interested to see if how he has developed and, and evolved this offseason in, in the Stephen F. Austin system. So those are the big storylines for me that I think people should be watching when this game kicks off on Saturday. Now, players to watch for Jacksonville State. P.J. Wells is a guy at the wide receiver spot. We just talked about the uncertainty at quarterback for Jacksonville State. He's a preseason all-ace on selection. Last season, over 500 yards, three touchdowns. He's going to have to be the number one target for whoever QB1 is against a talented Stephen F. Austin secondary with multiple guys who were all conference selections in the WAC. Now, P.J. Wills has the length. He has the route running. You want him to see with it, with that size, be more of a threat in the red zone for Jacksonville State. Only three touchdowns last year. He should be able to use that size to go up and make some plays in crucial situations for whoever the quarterback is. And with him being such a big target, and we're going to get into the defensive line of Stephen F. Austin here in a minute, if the quarterbacks are in trouble, P.J. Wills has to act as that safety blanket for for possibly two young quarterbacks or even Zion or even Webb if he steps into that QB one role. So PJ Wells is going to play a major role this weekend for Jacksonville State. Then on the defensive side, there were a few guys I wanted to pick. Marco uh, Marco Baker, Mikael Benton at the linebacker spot, but Jalen Swain is somebody who is going to have to play a big role, man. He is going to have to get after Trey Self and really play a large, a large role in uh, stopping the run game where Stephen F. Austin returns their leading rusher from last season as well. Swain's a two-time all-conference selection, was a hero sports freshman All-American. And throughout his, his short career, 69 tackles, 14 and a half for loss, five sacks and four for his fumbles. When he gets to the football, he comes with such force and he's so great with his hands and making sure he can strip the ball and hitting you right in the right spot that he can force big turnovers. And he also took some to the house last year. He has the athleticism to, with the ball in his hands, even after a turnover as a big guy on the defensive line to get upfield and go make something happen. And he's that's something that you cannot teach, man. And he does an excellent job of forcing turnovers and making impact plays for Jacksonville State's defense. 
due to the talent on the offensive side of the football for Jacksonville State. I mean, for Stephen F. Austin, Jalen Swain is going to have to have a big game. So these are the guys that I'm looking for that to be really, really important for Jacksonville State. Now, for Stephen F. Austin, it starts with Xavier Gibson. I don't think anyone who's tuned who tuned into this preview was expecting anybody else here. A consensus FCS All-American, six-time All-Conference selection at both the wide receiver spot and return specialist spot, Hit 74 catches last year, over 1,300 receiving yards and 14 receiving touchdowns. The question becomes, can Jack, does Jacksonville State secondary, who has a few pieces returning but lost some key contributors, can they stop Gibson? He had eight catches and about 90 yards last season. They kept him out of the end zone. If Xavier Gibson gets off here and they cannot stop him, this game could get out of hand very quickly. Xavier Gibson is the target, the key, whatever you want to say for this Jacksonville State defense. You have to stop Gibson because this Stephen F. Austin offense can hit another gear if Gibson has a big day. Now, the other question is, will JSU avoid giving Gibson opportunities on special teams. Are they going to avoid him in the punt, kickoff game, anything like that? That's a big question mark because with the ball in his hands, he is dangerous. And so I'm really interested to see, does he get any opportunities to make plays on the special to, in special teams uh, this, this game for Stephen F. Austin? Now, B.J. Thompson, defensive end, man, all WAC selection for our publication. Last season, 12 and a half tackles for loss and nine and a half sacks. Now, Jack Jacksonville State's offensive line has some size coming in, man. They're going to be a very, very big offensive line. If B.J. Thompson can wreak havoc in the backfield with a new running back coming in, potentially a new quarterback, it's going to cause a lot of problems for Jacksonville State's offense, especially in year one of a new scheme. B.J. Thompson is going to be someone you're going to want to watch. A lot of people are looking at him as a potential NFL draft pick out of the FCS. And if he and if he can wreak havoc in the backfield, it's going to be a long day for Jacksonville State. So watch for B.J. Thompson on the defensive side of the football for Stephen F. Austin. Now, for my prediction, man, I went back and forth with this one, but I've, I've been I've been the driver of the Stephen F. Austin bandwagon all offseason. I think this team has all the talent in the world to make a deep run in the playoffs and go win the WAC. I think there's a lot of distractions on Jacksonville State side. New coach. We don't know who the quarterback is. New running back. Some new pieces on the O-line. New pieces on the defensive side of the ball due to transfers, especially in the interior of the defensive line and at the safety spot. I think that's too much to overcome for a team that returns almost their entire I would say almost every key piece from last season in a strong eight and four season. It was a close game last year. I think Stephen F. Austin and Jacksonville State keep it close, but I got Stephen F. Austin pulling away late. Stephen F. Austin 34, Jacksonville State 23 in Montgomery. A huge win for the Lumberjacks in the FCS kickoff game in Montgomery. I just, I, listen, Trey Self, I think is going to take a major step forward. Xavier Gibson, in my opinion, is arguably the best wide receiver in the country right now at the FCS level. The defense is loaded from Brevin Randall to BJ Thompson to Miles Hurd on the back end, even, um, even, even um, Jeremiah at the safety spot on the back end as well for Stephen F. Austin. They just have too many pieces. And also, they have the best special teams unit in the country, both kicker and punter, FCS All Americans. And so, Stephen F. Austin, year, year four for Colby Carthel, gets a big win week zero over Jacksonville State, 34-23. And a whole other thing I forgot to mention, too, the Spygate accusations from uh, Rich Rodriguez, where he accused Stephen F. Austin of coming to watch the spring game and some open practices, which, listen, man, if the spring game is open to the public, if the spring game is on TV, I don't know if you can accuse anyone of spying, but I think all that did is give Stephen F. Austin even more motivation to come in here and get a signature win. I have Stephen F. Austin 34, Jacksonville State 23 this weekend in Montgomery. But guys, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, comment your score predictions below, and stay tuned for more Week Zero updates right here on the Blue Bloods. But guys, up until next time, the Blue Bloods are out. Yeah.